The Alpine Inn Fall Rock Fest is coming October 8th with no cover charge and a free shuttle to Bennett O'Reilly's, plus yard games and an outdoor bar. Enjoy a full day of music with Jen Wilder, Overplayed, and the Greedy Volunteers. Check out the Alpine Inn on Facebook for more information. Get outside in Pepin County. Pack up the family and visit the childhood home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. Sail on Lake Pepin, bike the Chippewa River State Trail, hike up Maiden Rock, and throw a line in a trout stream. Sign up to win a vacation at visitpepincounty.com. Winona has got a story to tell you. October 14th and 15th is the first ever Sandbar Storytelling Festival. Hear compelling stories about the human experience and cultural traditions by award-winning and nationally known storytellers. Learn more and get your tickets online at sandbarstorytellingfestival.org. The 1925 American silent horror film The Phantom of the Opera is coming to La Crosse on Halloween night. Featuring the Mighty Molar Organ, enjoy the silent film with the accompaniment it deserves at the Capella Performing Arts Center. Get tickets online at capellaperformingartscenter.com. We chatted with Seth Kaiser of the Lacrosse Community Theater to get a sneak peek at the 2022-2023 season, including classics like Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Rent, Legally Blonde the Musical, and Scrooge in Rouge, an English Music Hall Christmas Carol. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Seth Keezer. I am originally from West Bend, Wisconsin, which is about 40 minutes north of Milwaukee. Grew up uh, in that area. I have a great deal of extended family in the La Crosse area, so I actually grew up mm. visiting here a lot. Seeing Annie at LCT back in the late 90s was one yeah. of the first theatrical experiences that I remember as a kid. And the only thing I remember about that is seeing Sandy run on stage at the end of the show into <laughs> Annie's arms. And then one of the last moments of the show. So that really stuck with me. But I remember sitting in the theater back at the old space, which is now the Cavalier, and being like, oh, I want to, there's something there. And I think that that was really the big bug that bit me. What kind of road did you take to get to Lacrosse Community Theater? After that, you know, was really diving into as a young kid, movie musicals like Sound of Music, Wizard of Oz, Mary Poppins, all of that stuff, and really just find it, you know, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, all of these fun make-believe stories. And that got me into doing theater classes. I started taking different courses on performing and, you know, how to song interpretation and things like that when I was a kid through the local rec department. And then ended up through that getting involved in one of the local community theaters and then spreading out to sort of the greater Milwaukee area. I worked with a bunch of different companies from the time I was about eight until I graduated high school. So I think I did the math and it was about I was in 20 shows in about 10 years by the time I graduated high school. So I had been, and that's not including behind the scenes work, you know, assisting the director, playing the piano for shows, just, you know, really diving into and immersing myself in all different kinds of shows and scripts and books. And then I ended up going to college for theater at Viterbo. I studied stage management there and was there for four years and in my summers would go and work regionally doing summer stock which is a sort of theatrical rite of passage where you go and you do five shows in like eight weeks or something like that i can't remember what it is but you are constantly rehearsing at your busiest point you're usually rehearsing one show in the morning another show in the afternoon and doing a different one in the evening so just constantly having to cycle through shows and go back and you know ground yourself in whatever project you're working on in the moment but great gained a lot of great experience and then after college I moved out to New York and worked as an equity stage manager. So I joined the actor and stage manager union and was working off Broadway and then supplementing, you know, off Broadway work with daytime gigs. I got with the temp agency so I could work at places like Buzzfeed and I worked at a couple of digital media firms and Mm -hmm. things like that, just doing temporary contracts while I was in between shows. So just trying to make that work. And then After a few years of hustling in New York, I decided "Mm, it's time to pedal back a little bit. I didn't really have a break after college because I moved right after graduation. So 
I wanted to get back and have some consistency in in my work life because gigging and temping and doing all that and living paycheck to paycheck is a very difficult thing and takes a mental toll on you. So it was nice to get back to lacrosse because there was an opening up Viterbo at the time mm. in the Fine Arts Center. So I worked there for a bit. And then with the pandemic and everything, ended up going back and doing some freelance stage management work. And then this role opened up at LCT last year to be the marketing director. So I applied for, interviewed for, and have been working as the marketing director since about October of last year. And I'm now transitioning. We're in an interim phase right now, but I am transitioning into the artistic director position. Wow. <laughs> Man, it seems like you've been busy the last couple of years. Yeah, just a little bit. I, the <laughs> Duncan keeps me going. <laughs> Duncan keeps me going. You know, one thing I've noticed over the past six months to the year is just like a renewed vibrancy to the lacrosse community theater in terms of programming to the different shows you're offering. Can you kind of take us through this next upcoming season? Yeah. So we actually have just finished our first production of the year. We started this past weekend and the weekend before we had the Laramie Project, which is the first in our black box series of shows. A little bit of background at LCT, we have two performance spaces. We have the 450-seat Licky Theater, and then we have the 100-seat Veteran Studio Theater, which is a space that we can conform to, you know, whatever our production needs are. So we, we do more experimental type shows and shows that don't necessarily have to be confined to a proscenium stage. So we opened with the Laramie Project. And then in that series, we will continue with Scrooge and Rouge, an English musical Christmas Carol, which is our, I call it the naughty holiday slot where it's, you know, we usually have a more family friendly show in the Licky Theater and then uh, <laughs> show geared more towards adult humor in the black box. So we have those two offerings going on at the same time. And then continuing in the black box this year, we are going to remount our production of the Vagina Monologues which we, due to COVID, un had to cancel our final weekend of performances for that. So we wanted to bring that back and give our patrons the chance to witness the show if they had to, you know, if they were unable to make it because of our cancellation. And then we continue on with a hilarious show called Five Lesbians Eating a Quiche. And then we go on to Dog Sees God. So if you look at all of these shows, that series this year, we decided to craft um, into the LGBTQIA plus series. Again, sort of that we can theme this space and have, have these similar stories and help kind of ground that season in that space and give sort of a through line throughout the months of shows that we do. Kind of looking at the list, too, you know, you have some, I don't know if they're hits or something like that, but it seems like you tackle quite a few that are, I would imagine, are pretty intensive, you know, everything from Rent to Legally Blonde. I mean, how, yeah. when are those coming up and, you know, what goes into those? In our Broadway series, we have those more, not necessarily blockbuster, but those are inherently going to be bigger shows. Um, and the majority of them being musicals because you, there's, especially with COVID, what I was noticing in the trends in other regional theaters, other community theaters throughout the country is that people are, you know, people want to go out and go to things that are comfortable and familiar because we've had such a time of upheaval in what we've been able to intake in terms of performance art and just being able to you know going to a theater and witnessing a show with an audience is an experience yep. and you know when everything is put put on hold like that you sort of have to reintroduce it into the body you know just like when we started going back to the grocery stores more in person and doing things like that there's this need and want that we found for people to want to go to shows that are more familiar so like sound of music last year mm -hmm. was one of our top sellers and that was an indication as we were going forward and picking shows for this year. Okay, what do people want to invest their money and time in? Because it is an investment. And when there's so, again, so much unsurety, you, people want to go to titles like Beauty and the Beast, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Rent, Legally Blonde, these things that have a name and a following to Kill Mockingbird, our other show in that season. So being able to experience these familiar stories come to life in what we hope are new and exciting ways is part of the reason why we decided to pick these larger scale shows and more familiar shows. How has it been? I mean, we've all kind of lived through the COVID thing, but also just people coming back to the arts. Are people coming back or do they need a little bit of encouragement or what's that process like? 
I think they are. It's still a slowly but surely we had fair numbers for the season. Everything was pretty steady and pretty much on par with what other organizations, you know, looking at other community theaters in the area and just in the surrounding states, how things are going with them. You know, we were pretty, our sales were pretty steady. You know, they weren't, we're not necessarily back up to the pre-COVID numbers because there is still that, you know, I think people are buying more last minute. That's what we've noticed a lot too, is that as opposed to season ticket sales, we've found that there are a number of people that are buying last minute or wanting to rush shows because they don't know, you know, with last year, we ended up having some cancellations and things that you don't, so you don't know if the show's going to go on, what your personal health as someone that's going to the arts is going to be, still have our, you know, refund policies enacted so that we can make it easier for patrons if things come up like that. Yeah, I think we're on an uptick. And I think that this season, at least I'm hopeful that we can get more traffic back into our doors, particularly with titles, with the bigger titles that we have programmed. I know pretty much people head over to lacrossetheater.org to pick up tickets. I also saw that you guys kind of do these sort of, uh, I don't know if they're last minute ticket sales or things like that, but sometimes if they, if you follow you guys on Facebook, you have some sort of short turnaround ticket sales or something like that. Yeah. So for all of our performances, we, we offer student discounted tickets and military discounted tickets. So anybody that is an active or a veteran of military service, there are discounts available for those patrons. There's also discounts available for anybody that we define student age as anybody that, you know, like pre-K on through university. So there's always those options when purchasing tickets, but we typically have a handful of rush seats available for performances which we offer at $20 cash or credit one hour before the performance. Mm. We t- sort of gauge how ticket sales are going. And if we have, you know, we get to a certain point and we have more seats available, then we usually tend to offer other discounts or things that are, like you said, that shorter turnaround time. We had a lot for Avenue Q because in the summertime, we found that there are more people out and about downtown. And so we tried to do some more like group ticket offers and BOGO sales that way. So that, you know, again, you can, all go out and have a fun time at the theater. So we bring discounts like like that out on occasion. Yeah. But I mean, it's like some of these shows, these are some, you know, big name shows. You probably don't want to sleep on getting tickets. If you want to actually go, don't wait for those. uh... Oh, absolutely. No, we are, you know, shows like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Beauty and the Beast in particular, those are two titles that we're expecting a great deal of tickets for. So if people don't have their tickets currently, I would highly suggest getting them now to make sure that you do have seats. There is a likelihood that we will have some rush seats, but we're expecting limited availability for those, if any at all. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com and you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.